Hello and welcome back to the second video in this Let's Build a House series. So let's continue. The first things that we want to do are adding some medium sized clutter already, some boxes. In between videos, I realized it might be interesting to add a fireplace as well because they don't have anything to heat their house with at the moment. And We'll be adding in the first pieces of clutter as well. So to start off with the fireplace, we'll go to fire and we will, add, let's say this did too fancy. We'll make it a bit smaller as it's a small house. They won't need a very large fireplace and we'll remove this window to create a little bit more space for it. Uh, we'll put it out here and a nice little trick that I saw in the discord is that we take a chimney and put it on the back side of the fireplace and we put it quite close against the wall and we put this on the second layer and you'll add layers of the chimney on top there we go. Maybe one more. We will put them a bit further out. There we go. To create the sense of a, a chimney standing at the back of the house. And with that in place, I want to add in a rug. Because nothing feels as homey as a soft rug. Uh, let's see. Go to rogue and we take a square one that's perfectly fine and we'll pick a nice color um the chair is green so we want something that matches well with the rest of the interior i'd like to stay with a bit of red-ish kind of color also have to go all the way to the back um a bit further to red that over there so I want to add in a few boxes over here they can use it to store any goods that they might have or just put things on top of it um, any way they like and when you have a few of these in place already you start to notice that there's plenty of Things going around, plenty of interesting things to see. We'll add an open one over here, put it below the top box to create the idea that there's some depth They're stacked on top of each other. And we'll want to do the same thing somewhere in the hallway. I actually, in between videos, already changed the layer uh, on which the stairs are. I put them on layer two or maybe on layer three. And we still need to add in a little bit of flooring over here because right now it's part of the bottom floor. And we don't want that. We want it to uh, get everything aligned. There we go. And we might want to make sure that when we put like a box down here, for example, it doesn't show through. So we'll add in a piece of flooring patterns and we'll take the big one again go to layer two and put it over here and we'll want to again add in the wood graining effect that we did in last video those are pebbles that's not looking for uh there we go it's the darker one there we go awesome and now if we put some crates on layer one it will seem like there is uh, some spacing underneath the staircase where they can you know store store a few items um i'll want to take this different color to make sure that it's quite obvious that it's not part of the stairs and we'll add a chest Let's see and uh, not too fancy and this is fine, just make it a bit bigger. Smaller. 
We'll add it over there. And we'll just put another crate on top of this one. And we'll just show off the tip of that crate. Uh, and we'll put it a bit further to the right because there would, logically speaking, be more place to the right side of the staircase. As you can see, we already got a few things going on underneath the stairs now and uh, it already creates a bit of a height difference and uh, we're going to put some focus on that later with uh, some shadows um, and really pull the floor and the crates uh, away from the stairs or the other way around actually. Um, right now I think the Core pieces of furniture are all in place. Uh, the biggest objects are here. If we would add a lot more, it would become very messy. So I want to leave it as at this for now. You can go as wild as you like. If you have a larger house, you can always increase the amount of furniture that you have in there. Um, as long as there's plenty of space to move around for people who would actually be living there. Uh, generally, I always try to make like a nice corner to sit around the fireplace uh, but right here in this house and with the layout that I've chosen that's not really practical um, and it serves more of a well just a general heating purpose instead of a place where people will sit and have a chat and actually you still have like a line of sight from uh, from the chair and from the table into the uh, the fireplace so Having done this, I would like to go in and add the first pieces of clutter. And I usually go about this room by room um, so that they uh, so that it's easier to uh, stay in a the theme and uh, find things that are specific to that kind of room. So we want to start off in the kitchen. Um, something that always does well is, of course, a pan. Um, so we want to have that over here. We'll put it make it a bit larger over here and we'll add a pot on the side which is standing over here to give the sense that they're cooking perhaps we'll put in some food in the pan as well and we're going to add a cutting board um, over here as if they're preparing a meal right now um, over to this side and in kitchenware the old kitchenware we have a knife which is perfect and we'll add some some pieces of food on here as well it doesn't have to make perfect sense every single time um we just want to make it a bit colorful and make it interesting to look at um, and to do that we're going to need uh, a basket of sorts and we'll be able to put in some bread uh, which they can get whenever they want to We'll add a plate like the one I just had and we can put in some or put on some either uh, some vegetables or some meat or both actually uh, whatever you like um, side we'll take this and bring it to the front so that it's in front of the plate and we wanted a bit at an angle, not at the exact same angle, um, because that would look a bit weird. And we will go and find ourselves some food now. Go. Yeah. So we'll add in a few pieces of bread. I always try to make it abundant, um, because if you have a whole basket with just one bread in it, it, it might be realistic, but it's a bit boring. Um, so I, I don't like to do that. So we'll put in the cheese, uh, but for that I want a plate underneath and maybe a pie. Uh, they're having a, a very interesting dinner. Maybe they have something to celebrate today. I don't know. Uh, we'll take in three different kinds of meat. There we go. And there's already one, uh, perhaps even two. Um, yeah, that's all right. Uh, there are two already in the pan. We'll leave the pot empty. That's perfectly fine. And we will add some salad over here. And I also want the other half to be filled. So perhaps they already have some ham here and some cheese. 
And don't be afraid to make it a bit messy. It actually looks better when it's messy. Um, we'll take a plate. Here. And we'll take the pies. And we have something with a bit of a brighter color. Not blue. Go with the red one. And we make it a tiny bit smaller so that you can see that there's actually a plate underneath. And I, I don't pay too much attention with the layering yet usually. Uh, but you can if you want. Uh, later on we'll add some shadows here as well. Uh, when we've decided where we're going to put some of our lighting. Um, but you can always do it when you're putting down the actual shade itself, the shades and shadow paths. Um, but it is useful to have things on a separate layer. So I often put the food on layer 4, have cutting boards and the table itself be either on layer 2 or 3. And that is... Or, and we'll do the last one as well. Okay. I also want to add in some drawers in the table itself. And just to make it... Uh, to change it a bit up, that it's not just an ordinary table. But you have a few drawers to leave your knives or other cutlery. Uh, just put it a bit further to the back. There you go. Uh, to the side. There. And that's a bit too far. Uh, over here. Like you would have in a regular kitchen counter as well. And um, they might want to have something to leave their dishes. After they had dinner, they might go to a well or just clean up in there. So we'll put it even underneath the drawers and it doesn't have to show all the way just like a little bit you want to keep this side free so that they can stand there and use it to well for all their cutting and um then you already have actually quite a nice uh kitchen counter going on and we can maybe add a mug with something to drink like water or beer or wine um because I, well, I always have something to drink with me while I'm cooking, so they might as well. And now we're at the mugs anyway, we'll add a few in here as well. We'll go all the way to the top and just put a few down as if that's where they leave their clean cutlery and plates. So we'll take a plate again and I actually want the... Uh, the darker ones, I believe they're called a bowl here. Yeah, they are. But they're not a bowl to me. Uh, put that over there. Mm, we'll take a plate to change things up. Go a bit further down and we will need some kitchenware. Uh, some cutlery. Tiny bit smaller, otherwise it would be quite huge. What we have there, and uh, we have a spoon as well, I believe. Mm, there we go, and we'll add in a few spoons. I want to bring this one to the front, make sure that it can overlap with the other pieces of cutlery, and now to make uh, this. Shelf stand a bit out from the background. We are going to put something underneath as if something's laying in there. And for that, I always, no, not always, but generally like to use sacks of grain or flour, would make a lot of sense actually right now. We'll put this on layer. Yeah, one is fine. I'll make them a bit, bit smaller because if you have it at full size it's about one and a half it's that's it's five foot so one and a half meter that's quite large for just a family we'll make it a bit smaller and we will make sure that like one of the leather shows we'll take another one with a slightly different color as well and put it underneath 
There we go. And maybe they have, uh, they've bought a, a sack of apples as well. Um, I like using these sacks of apples and other kinds of vegetables and fruits to bring some color into the kitchen. Um, but we don't put them on the ground. That's actually a place where all the mice would be able to get it. So we'll just put it up here. Um, some red apples as well. And there we go, the kitchen already starts to look, uh, look a bit cozy. We'll add a few bottles. Because everybody needs some wine. And we'll take the ones that are standing upright, put them on one. I like to go for green, green kind of glass. Ish. There we go. This is actually a bit too bright. I like it. Yeah, that's fine. So right now, it you already see it's on top of the the crate that it's in. Uh, we we can change that around later. We'll add in a few pieces of wood uh, that overlap again with the bottles, and uh, we'll add in some shadows uh, to make sure that it it looks like it's in there instead of on there. Um, Took me a bit of time to actually get that trick going for myself, but once you know what, what you need to do, uh, it's, it's actually quite easy. Um, another nice trick is to make the bottles a teeny tiny bit translucent. We'll take this hex code. And generally speaking, that does look better than having the alpha value all the way at 100. And the last one, there we go. And maybe we have one bottle or something different laying in there. Let's see what the kitchenware has to offer for us right now. This is something that I just keep doing over and over again. I look into the things that, the, uh, the, the assets that there are. And I just take them from there. So right now you see this mortar and pestle and uh, pestle, sorry. And that's something that would make a lot of sense to have over here on the uh, the kitchen table. So we'll just put one over here as well. And we'll keep on scrolling. And this is nothing that I really like that we can use. So we'd like to go perhaps for something, a sort of storage uh, or another sack. But we'll take one that's tied off at the top and put it a bit further down. Yeah, and like place it in the corner over there. That's great. So here we go. Bit up. The center it might be a bit empty, but I think that's fine. Um, you can stuff it as much as you like, like I said before. Maybe we can add in one or two shelves. Um, just a single shelf with a few books on there. They have some cooking books. Um, I like this, but then we'll make it a bit smaller and we'll take it all the way to layer four. And we'll overlap it a little bit with the, the kitchen counter, uh, like so. Maybe even a bit more. I will put it a bit further down. I could place it over here, but then it will be in the way. If you take a sharp turn when when going through the open doorway, you probably bump your head into uh, into the shelf. So we don't want we don't want to put it like right next to the door. We'll put it a bit over here. Later on, we can put in some shadows as well uh, to make it stand out from there. And it just looks uh, it, it creates even more depth than we already have. Uh, and we'll add some books, like I said, so down here. And there we go. And I actually know you have a few smaller bottles um, that we might be able to use. This one is... These ones are great, but not what I want. 
and we'll make it uh, just do a few different colors very dark brown ish and we'll put in a red one as well they could be or anything really sauces or some herbs that are in there and that's what I probably want to leave the kitchen for now um, I'll continue on with the living room and the hallway in the next video um, I expect that it will take uh, well about one video to finish both and afterwards I would like in to add in a few lamps some shadows and then we'll uh, continue on with the outside of the house. So thank you again for watching. Um, if you like what you've seen, please hit the like, favorite or subscribe button. And I'll see you again in the next video.